Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at chapter number 10 called the unit circle and radian measures. What we're going to do is we're first going to go ahead and try to define exactly what a radian is. And the main question that we need to answer is how do you measure angles? Okay. Now, there's one way that we've always been very familiar with, of course, which is degrees. And that is going to be an angular measure. So in other words, 45 degrees. But then we're also going to have something that are called radians. Okay? And the difference between the degree and the radian, although they both measure angles, is that one is going to be considered an angular measure, whereas the other one is going to be considered a linear measure. Okay, so where does that actually come into play and how does that make any sense? Now, let's just go ahead and take a look at any circle. Okay, here's our circle here. I just put it on the x-y axis. Now, we know that there is going to be 360 degrees in one revolution. So if I start over here and I say that that's zero degrees, I go all the way around this way, I take one revolution around, I know for a fact that I got 360 degrees. Now in the same respect, if I go ahead and I take a look at the circumference, and the circumference, remember, is, a, is how long it is. It's, it's a linear measure. The circumference really is 2 pi radius, 2 pi times the radius in one revolution. Now, we need a, a different interpretation of what this is because everybody knows this formula, but do we really know exactly what this is referring to? What this says, and let's just, instead of saying 2 pi, let's say that this is 6.28. What this is actually saying is that if you take one radius, and you take 6.28 of those radiuses, and you place it upon the circle itself, or the circumference of the circle, the perimeter of the circle, then basically that's how long one revolution is going to be if you were to go ahead and take that and stretch it out like a piece of string and measure it. And that's always going to be true because we know that the circumference, regardless of how long the radius is, it's always going to be 2 times 2 pi times the radius. So in other words, there's always going to be 6.28 dot 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 radiuses in one revolution. So there you go. That is the, that is the connection between degrees and between radians. Because what we can say then is that in 360 degrees or in one revolution, there's actually the same thing as 2 pi radii. So again, remember, think about 2 pi 6.28. There's actually about 6.28 radiuses on the circumference of the circle for every 360 degrees that you rotate. So there's, our, there's the equality there. We're taking a degree measure, and we're saying that it's actually going to be equal to a linear measure. And therefore, what we can do is we can say then that these two is the same because we can just divide both sides by 2 and say 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radius. So if I go 180 degrees this way, then actually I've actually covered 3.14 radiuses along the circumference of the circle. So what that means then is that we can then go ahead and generate a conversion factor. Okay, and so we can say then that 180 degrees divided by pi radians is the same thing as 1 because it refers to the same thing, although, although the units of measure are different. Or we can say that pi radians over 180 degrees is 1. So now we can go ahead then and convert between degrees and between radians, okay, by using this conversion factor. Now one particular conversion factor that is going to be absolutely essential for us to do because we want to apply it to some of the other things here is this idea. And I'm just going to go ahead and use basically what I just uh, used this conversion factor that we just came out with to see how do we go about converting degrees to radians. Well, the way that we do that then is that if we know that this is, say for example, theta degrees, then what I can do then is I can just go ahead and take pi radians over 180 degrees. Notice that the degrees will cancel out. And what I come out with is a degree in radians. Okay, I come out with a number that is going to be representing how many radians that is equivalent to in this amount of degrees. Okay, how many radii on the circumference of the circle would represent this angle. Okay, and that's how we can go about converting between radians and degrees, and in this particular case, converting from a degree to a radian. Okay, so if this doesn't make any sense to you right now, we'll go ahead and discuss it a little bit more in class, but we need to kind of move on to here. Because what we've done before, and all of you are familiar with this because of what you've studied in the past, is we can actually go ahead and using the degree measure, 
determine what the arc length will be and determine what the sector area will be given any central angle and the radius. So, say for example, if we wanted to go ahead and find the arc length, and this is what we're referring to here, that green squiggly part, there's our central angle. We say that if we take theta degrees divided by 360 degrees, multiply it by the circumference of the circle, you come up with what the arc length will be. And so there you go, we can just simplify and we can come up to something that looks like this. In the same respect, if we go ahead and take a look at sector area, it's basically the same idea, except for now we're using the area of the circle instead. We have the central angle divided by 360 degrees times by the area of the circle, and we come up with this formula here. So this is something that should be, for all of you, just a refresher, and just something to bring back those memories, because all of you have seen this before. Now the thing is, is we want to actually go ahead and take a look at what the radian representation of or the radian mean, the means by which we can calculate arc length and sector area using radians instead of degrees. Okay? Now, notice that we said over here is that if you have theta degrees and you multiply it by pi over 180 degrees, you can actually go ahead and talk about that as a radian measure. So, what that means then is that if I go ahead and I take this part here and I just move it up here, notice that I have the theta, right, in degrees, I have the pi over 180, which is the conversion factor to go from degrees to radians. So therefore, this whole part right over here just becomes a radian measure. So, what that means then is that if you're given radians, your angle is in radians instead of degrees, and you want to go ahead and calculate the arc length, and you know the radius, it's very easy, you just do this. It's just theta in radians times it by the radius. Okay, same thing with the sector area. The sector area is just a little bit more complicated, but it's not that much more complicated. So notice again, what we take, what we do is we try to look for this conversion factor in the formula there, and we say that there's our theta for our angle. We need this conversion factor of pi radians over 180, so I put the pi over 180. And what I need to make sure is I have this formula here, so it's pi over 360 if I multiply by one half, and then pi r squared, and there's the pi r squared. So notice again, this part right over here becomes the radian measure. So again, if you have your angle, your central angle, in radians, instead of actually converting to degrees and then using this formula, you can just go ahead and substitute directly here, if you know the radius as well. Okay. So, this whole part with the radians, hopefully, you now have an idea of what it is, okay, how it is different from degrees, how it's derived, how we can come out with a conversion factor so that we can go between both forms of measurement, and then after that, how can you go about applying it to something that we've already seen before in arc length and sector area. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at some examples and hopefully you'll become a little bit more familiar with radians. Now, just one word, uh, one piece of advice. The next, uh, p the next chapters, the things that we're going to be dealing with regards to trigonometry, you're going to have to know uh, radians and degrees and be able to interchange between them very, very fluently. So just keep that in mind. We need to be able to understand what radians are and become very comfortable with using that. But that's going to take time and practice, but don't give up. This is the starting point, and hopefully we'll be able to make some sense of all of this together. Okay, so take a look at it, let's see how it works out, and we'll see you the next time in class. Okay, bye-bye.